Thank you. Okay. Hello. My name is Linda Epp. I am an indigenous First Nation woman. My ancestry stems from the Seashelt Nation on the Sunshine Coast. And I'm part of something called the 60s Scoop. I'm a survivor of the 60s Scoop. And for those of you that don't know what that is, in the 1960s, 70s, and into the 80s, Indigenous children were taken away from their families and from their culture and placed in foster care. My twin sister and I were taken away, put in foster care, and adopted into a Canadian-German Mennonite family. Ads like this were placed in the newspapers. My twin sister and I were the youngest of five adopted. We were raised in a white world, and we were raised thinking we were Filipino. And I guess that's because it's better than being Indian. I experienced death at a young age. My first dad died when I was five. And that was really tough. We moved around quite a bit. My mom was single with five kids. She remarried to a man who had six children, so we were a blended family of 11. I was still the youngest. <laughs> So we moved around quite a bit, and we moved from BC to Saskatchewan. I was 13 years old at the time. This time, my life was getting really challenging. I experienced a lot of abuse. So I ran away at the age of 16. And I ran away back to BC. And I ended up graduating high school with the help of friends. And it was really the first time I connected with my nation. I experienced a lot of different things. I was homeless a few times. I experienced violence, abusive relationships. But instead of being homeless, I became a stripper. <laughs> You see, when you're a stripper, you get booked on a weekly basis, Monday to Saturday. And you have accommodation for that week. So I thought that was the best option for me at the time. It's really hard for me to reflect on that sometimes, you know? I could have easily been one of those faces of what society's preset convention of what an Aboriginal woman or person should look like. I was and still am a person that wants to better themselves. I'm stubborn. I'm a Taurus. In reality, my life could have been a statistic. For over a decade, I was one step away from being an Aboriginal woman dead. I, Linda Epp, feel like I've been breaking convention my whole life. So how did I get off this dark road, this dark path that I was on? It was trauma. <laughs> trauma woke me up. You see, in 1997, I was couch surfing. I was on my way to Japan to go strip for a few months, and I received news that my mother had died, my adopted mom. Within a few months, my best friend got murdered and two other guy friends of mine died in two different car accidents. I was a mess. I could have been a statistic. I needed a change. And on this uncertain path, I decided to go up to Whistler, and I had the opportunity to work at a friend's restaurant. And I moved to the beautiful resort town of Whistler. Wow, what a change. <laughs> After a few years, I felt like I wanted to do something more with my life. There's always something inside of me that wants to better herself. 
so I decided to go back to school as a mature student. I was in my early 30s. So I moved back up to Whistler, I moved from Whistler to Vancouver, and I went to the Native Education College in Vancouver. Wow, what another life-changing experience. It was the first time I was surrounded by so many Indigenous people. <laughs> but it was the first time I really felt a sense of belonging, a sense of acceptance, a sense of home. I met other Indigenous people. I connected with them and I stepped right into my culture. This ignited something inside of me. It inspired me to have a voice for Indigenous people and to do something more. I continued on to Capilano University where I obtained a degree in tourism and I was the First Nation student liaison. I fell in love with learning about my culture. I ended up moving back to Whistler and I worked with the House Sound Women's Centre Society and at one of our meetings, we, we talked about a Sisters in Spirit vigil. And I was familiar with the vigils because I was involved with them as a student. And so on October 4th, that's the day that we honor the Aboriginal women who have gone missing and murdered in Canada. Vigils, vigils are held all across Canada. There's been over a thousand women who have gone missing and murdered in Canada. So... I felt I needed to organize a Sisters in Spirit vigil in Whistler. We're in the backyard in Lilwat Nation, Mount Curry. Families have been affected by missing and murdered Indigenous women. Here in Squamish, Squamish Nation, families have been affected by missing and murdered Indigenous women. All Indigenous people have been affected by missing and murdered women, girls, two-spirited, men, boys. So I stand for them. I have a voice. I stand for those families who feel beaten down, who feel like they can't fight anymore. I stand for those people that feel that their voice isn't being heard. Prior to the vigil, I wanted to provoke thought and discussion. So I hung red dresses around Whistler. And a red dress signifies an Aboriginal woman or girl who has gone missing. Jamie Black first hung red dresses at the University of Winnipeg in 2011, and I thought it was a powerful, impactful statement. So I went around and I asked for local support. I hung red dresses at the Moore Young Art Center, at the squamish Lilwa Cultural Center, the Odain Art Museum, the Whistler Public Library, Avalanche Pizza, Blends Coffee, Karumba Restaurant, and the Oracle. It really means something for me to knock on doors of businesses and ask them to get involved into a movement that they know nothing really about. I'm really grateful for their support. It's a humbling and powerful experience to walk through the village singing the Woman's Warrior song. I stand beside families who have lost family members, sisters, mothers, aunties, cousins. I stand beside them and the connection to culture and humanity, that's what fills me up. That is why I do this work. Look at the red dresses. I could have easily been one of those red dresses. I was one step away from just being an Aboriginal woman dead, another one. For all I know, my birth mother is one of those red dresses. So by doing this work, 
we are changing the narrative of what has been told to us for so many generations. You're worthless. You're invisible. Be quiet. Instead, we are being vocal. We are being visible. We are breaking convention. So what does breaking convention mean to you? Perhaps stop stereotyping indigenous people. We are not all the same. Not all Aboriginal people are alcoholics. Injustice for indigenous people still exists today. Things didn't take place 100 years ago. We can't just get over it like so many people ask us to. Look at the current news. Tina Fontaine, Colton Bushy. Really, how would you think? What would you do? How would you react if your child was taken away? Or how would you react if your child was murdered? As we look and move forward, I challenge you, educate yourself in Indigenous issues. Break away from stereotypes. Connect and outreach to an Indigenous community on a personal level. Allow me to hang a red dress in your establishment. See the humans behind the trauma. Together, let's break the cycle. And bring light to the new possibility of change. I'd like to teach you something. Put your hand to your heart. And open it up. Say, Haishka. Hosiam. That means thank you in the Kosalish language.